Uh, we've got a very interesting question by Patty Price, uh, which is actually quite interesting because the question is around pricing as well to some extent. Um, Patty wants to know, she says she requires advice on the charging of fees on a private electricity metering company. Uh, she says, ours levies a 14% fee to the purchaser for cash purchases and a 10% fee for EFT purchases. She wants to know, should the landlord compensate the tenant for these fees or should the tenant be paying for the admin involved and the convenience of having a personal prepaid meter installed? She says, look, we've previously had uh, simple electricity meters, meters for each tenant uh, and they were billed according to their usage. However, she ran into a world of issues when it came to payments and so forth. Um, Solna, can we give Patty some advice? And I, and I think I'm going to give my answer almost to a slightly wider question. Um, simply saying that in any rental situation, in uh, even in a levy situation, most payments, if if the option of an EFT is there, and it is, um, in in fairness, most banks as pretty legit very easy to use, user-friendly apps and online banking. And even in cases where you might not have a smartphone or you might not have access to a laptop or something like that, all the banks have stations where you can go and do online banking. So the truth is, is if this conversation was five years ago even, I would have said, mm, you know, um, cash payment in a bank is really actually an option. But the truth is, we've seen most banks, and and uh, I'm sorry, I, I bank with FNB. Thanks, FNB. I accept that. Uh, <laughs> I accept advertising time for the firm, but um, like or for product PLA. placement. <laughs> product placement. <laughs> it's a pleasure. <laughs> um, no, I, I bank with uh, with FNB, and the, the only reason why I mention that is they don't even have tell, uh, tellers in their banks anymore. I mean, they they've closed most of the tellers. I don't even know, to be quite honest, if somebody pays me cash. Where would I go with the money? Like, I uh, don't really accept cash payments in the firm because it's dangerous and unnecessary. Bruno, I don't know if you've ever had in the past, say, two years, uh, if you've had cash payments, I don't see that often. I don't, I wouldn't even know what to do with the money. Like, do you put it under your bed? Do you, you know, call Rasi Erasmus to take it onto Luna. Look at me now. Well, look, you, want avoid, you want to avoid paying tax. <laughs> yes, yes, you do. Oh, yes. <laughs> if you want to avoid paying tax. My, my point is cash payments isn't something yeah. that we see often. And there is a major cost involved in the cash handling fee. Remember, for the bank themselves, it's a major risk. If you have EFTs and you're only working with zeros and ones, uh, binary code, just for anybody wondering why the bank's only working with one and zero runs. Um, uh, if it's only EFTs constantly, it's safer for the bank. They don't have to have this massive bolts with actually money. They don't have the risk of being robbed and things like that. It makes more sense uh, for everybody to load a massive fee to a cash transaction. And that fee can definitely be pushed on to the person making the payment. So, Patty, I'm sorry, I took a major turn to get to your answer. And the answer is, whoever the party is that's paying can definitely, regardless of the kind of transaction, be required to pay a cash uh, payment fee um, instead of going the EFT route. Very long answer for actually a very quick question. So, yes, I would definitely say that is 100% allowed. And also, let's do EFTs. It's safer. Yes. 
No. I'll, I'll take your cash though. I will take your cash if you have it. Send it to me. <laughs> if you have problems with that. <laughs> I'm not going to give you anything at the time, but I will take it. Sorry, Bruno. <laughs> no, 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 no. So on, uh, but on Silna's note, I think I think there's a level of uh, pra- uh, pragmatism that, that, that applies to this and exactly what Silna was saying. So all jokes aside, <laughs> the reality is that a lot of our systems nowadays work off bank transactions because mm-hmm. of recons. Uh, you, you simply pull bank statements in and it automatically recons in the software. So as we're moving on to um, like fourth industrial revolution where everything's tech-based and automated, it doesn't make, it, it, you need the bank account uh, active and uh, up to date in order to be able to recon your accounting. So what people need to understand is there's a justification for this payment. It's not considered to be a penalty. It's completely justified because it's extra manual labor that goes behind it. So the, the, those additional costs, it's, it's the banking charges and the actual effort of going to the bank and um, depositing the money in situations where you shouldn't have to. Um, and it's exactly that, like to do your VAT return, you need it in the bank account. Um, you know, as, as attorneys, we're actually not even allowed to take cash because as soon as cash comes in, it has to be in our trust account, I think within 24 hours, if I'm not mistaken. So mm. it has to be deposited immediately. So yeah, just, just make, make life easy. I know that some people get paid in cash and then they struggle to open bank accounts, but to deposit, put it in an envelope and you actually go to the ATM and put it in there and it's, it's deposited. Oh, thanks, Bruno. Thanks, Selma. Um, look, we've got another question here, but I'm going to ask both of you to put your boxing gloves on. Not to box each other, but oh. this is a very, this is a question that's going to require a little bit of, a little bit of jabbing here and there. So okay. <laughs> this, this, this person says, is it legal for my landlord to stipulate in the lease agreement that if he, uh, that if he does not receive rent for two days after it becomes due, that he can switch off my electricity or my water? Is this contract legal? No. Can I punch my landlord? I guess that's what I'm asking. I'm joking. <laughs> no. <laughs> no and no. <laughs> I, I think if we if we look at a bit more detail, um, so, so let's first start with, let's not say something as drastic as disconnecting electricity supply, but a penalty or something like that. The Rental Housing Act, the Unfair Practice Regulations, uh, to the Rental Housing Act specifically says that a landlord is never, ever, ever allowed to charge a late payment penalty or a fee. And the regulation says, regardless of the form it takes, anything other than interest is not allowed. Now, if we look at the Interest Act, what we're allowed to charge there is uh, 2% per month to a maximum of 24% per annum. And that is the only thing you're allowed to charge. You're not allowed to charge a late payment penalty. And guys, be careful. I know of people um, that does a reduced rental if you pay on time. The thing is, it takes another form of a penalty if you pay late. So regardless of how you shape it or frame it, if it means somebody has to pay you more because they are paying late, it is a penalty for late payment, and that is not allowed in terms of the Rental Housing Act, uh, specifically the unfair practice regulations to it. Now, agreeing to something illegal doesn't make it enforceable and it doesn't make it legal. Uh, we have a rule in law um, that contracts can't be contra bonimores. So that means it's not allowed, you're not allowed to contract around something that is outside of good morals. Now, good morals isn't just like, um, I'm not going to give examples, but good morals isn't just the the good morals that you would typically imagine. It's also, um, is this fair? Is this just? So so contra boni mores has less to do actually with good morals and more with justness and equitability. What is fair? What is right? What is good? And what does our society see as okay? And you're not allowed to contract to something that is not allowed in law. So if the act says you're not allowed to charge a penalty, even if the parties agree that you are allowed to charge a penalty, it's going to be unenforceable. It doesn't make the whole contract illegal or unenforceable, but that part will be um, unenforceable. And at the same time, 
Um, if you agree to something like the landlord may disconnect my electricity supply, again, that's contracting out of law and you're not allowed to do that. I've seen contracts, Bruno, now you're going to giggle. Um, I've seen lease agreements agreeing that the Prevention of Illegal Evictions Act won't apply to that agreement. Residential agreements with the act will apply. You can't say, oh, no, you know what? We've decided we're going to have our own little thing happening here. And the actual law isn't going to apply to this. You can't do that. So that will definitely not, uh, not be enforceable. Definitely not. And the truth is, I think uh, we started actually talking about the, the God launch story uh, of Sunday. That made me realize again, people do not read their contracts and people do not understand the content of your agreement. Don't just sign a lease agreement because it looks right. Go through it, ask how many people are using this agreement. Is it a, a, a well-known trusted agreement that if you're not sure of what you are reading, please spend the money on an attorney just to have a quick read through it. Um, please don't use your, your second year uh, law cousin. Um, it's a brilliant kid and we're very grateful th that we're on second year. But uh, unless you in practice and, and you really understand how a contract will impact you, uh, please stay away from signing it um, uh, and, and get the right advice. So definitely won't be enforceable. And on that note, we've, we've come to the end of, of our webinar. Uh, it, as always, it's such a pleasure to have you, our viewers, with us. Uh, post your questions in the group. We look forward to hearing from you and engaging with you. Uh, and as always, thank you so much, Soma. Thank you, Bruno. Mm -hmm.